Oh, guten Morgen, guten Morgen. So, uh, while I'm gone today, we're going to uh, take some notes in the preliminary page here. So, uh, get out your heft, das ist wunderbar, and after the first page where you have your name, I hope you still have your name on this page, okay, uh, you need to go to this next page <clears throat> that is mostly blank and it says G2 uh, preliminary notes right here. G2 preliminary notes. Let's see if I can get that up there. Okay, so it'll say uh, G2 preliminary notes. Okay. The first part of the notes, we're going to take up about half of the uh, page here to write out the alphabet. You're going to write it out like this, in this order please, uh, and with some space in between each one so you can take extra notes like I will be doing today. So, uh, in the G2 preliminary notes, the first upper half of this uh, page You'll write this here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, second line, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, third line, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, and the last line, X, Y, Z. I'll give you a minute or two to uh, work on that, and then we'll, uh, we'll go on from there. Actually, while you're writing that, I'm going to check something on the camera to make sure I've got this right. Hopefully that'll be okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. As you're writing these notes too, uh, you'll need to understand this, that these will be graded and you have to write them so that I can read them and if you could say well I can read them uh, you, know, you yourself can read them, it's not the issue, you're not the one grading it I have to grade it so you need to write it so that I can read it alright so make your writing very clear when we do these notes okay very good assuming you have that let's uh, start pronouncing the first line uh, this is ah, uh, like an ah, uh, so I will write ah, uh, okay. Uh, the B is be, like in a bay by the sea. Uh, the C is tse, tse, so it's like the word say, like I, you know, he will say something, but there's sort of a T sound right before it, so I'll put a T and S-A-Y, say. T-S-A-Y, just to get that sound, say. Uh, this one is day, just like good day. This one is A, like the Canadians say, A. So E-H. The F is the same as ours, F. And this one is gay. Yes, I know. Gay. That's the way it's pronounced. Alright? So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Try that yourselves. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. One more time. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Very good. This one is pronounced ha. It's like laughter. Ha. This one confuses a lot of people. This is E, E, not I, but E. So, I'm going to just put two E's here so you get the idea, E, okay? Uh, this one here is pronounced Yot, Yot. So I'll just spell something Y-O-T-E to get that down, Yot, all right? This one here is Ka, Ka. So, like Ka. K-A kind of sound. 
Now, L, M, N, and O are the same sound in both languages, so I'll leave those alone. And uh, this last one is pay, like you need to pay me. Pay. You got that? Very good. Uh, let's uh, pronounce this line and then we'll get those uh, together. So now we have ha, i, yot, ka, l, m, n, o, pay. Once again on this line, ha, i, yot, ka, l, m, n, o, pay. Now all of you from the beginning, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, ha, i, yot, ka, l, m, n, o, pay. One more time a little faster. A, b, c, d, e, f, g, ha, i, yot, ka, l, m, n, o, pay. Very good. Now this one is uh, cool, almost like a cow. So, <coughs> um, let me call, I'll go with K-O-O, -O, just to get that sound out. Cool, alright? This sound is one of the toughest ones for Americans to get in German. I'm going to put down uh, the word air, A-I-R, and if you say air, that's okay. That's, that's good enough for right now. Don't worry about uh, big pronunciations or anything like that. But the way it really is done is you have to... Uh, you know what the thing is called in the back of your throat that hangs down? Uh, that's called a uvula. And that is uh, going to be vibrating to get the German R sound. And so you don't uh, vibrate your tongue like in Spanish. The Spanish one is that's the tongue uh, vibrating. In German it's way in the back of the throat almost like gargling okay and that uvula uh, will vibrate back there. So it'll sound like this so I'll get a little bit closer so you can see my tongue is not vibrating there, it is just the back of my throat, uh, the uvula that is vibrating. Try it a couple more times. Way in the back of the throat. Takes a long time, it took me four years to really get that down to where I felt comfortable with it, so don't worry about that. Uh, so therefore, if you had a word, and don't write this one down, but if you had a word like rot, it's not rot, it's rot, rot, rot. Can you hear that? Rot. Alright, let me get rid of that. Let's see here. Very good. So, uh, that one is er, er, but again, don't worry about pronunciation. Uh, the S sounds just like ours, S. Uh, this one is te. Like T A Y, T A. Uh, this one is ooh, like ooh. Alright, so I'll go like that, ooh. Okay. Uh, this one gets a little tricky too, these, uh, these two here. Uh, this one is actually foul. It's like I hit a foul ball, but without the L at the end. So I'll spell foul without the L at the end. Foul. Foul. Okay. And this one is uh, V, okay? It's uh, got a V sound, V. So this line, the tough line, goes Q, R, S, T, U, V, V. Again on this line, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V. Now let's try it from the beginning. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Ha, I, Yot, Ka, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, V. And let's do that again uh, a little faster. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Ha, I, Yot, Ka, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, V. And these last three are... Uh, uh, this one's a fun one, though. It's X, X. So it's like ick with an S at the end. So X, 
uh, X. This is the funniest sounding one of all. Uh, this is Upsilon. So it's like Upsilon. Upsilon from a Greek from a Greek letter Epsilon. But Upsilon. Upsilon. Okay? And this final one is Tset. It's like I'm going to set something down, but there's a slight T sound in front of it. So I'll put T in front of set. 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 Okay, so X, Upsilon, set. So now let's do the, uh, the whole thing here. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, Y, Z. Again, a little faster. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, Y, Z. All right? So there's your alphabet. And now uh, we need to take some more notes here uh, about certain letters. I'm not going to do every letter, but there's a few that need to have a little bit more explanation here. And uh, remember, as you write your notes, uh, all notes are to be written in regular pencil or blue or black ink, just like everything we do. Regular pencil or blue or black ink. If you write it in uh, red or something like that, you will um, you'll lose. So, okay, you'll have to rewrite them or something like that. So, and please write these nice and neatly. So, let's see here. I will do, I wonder if I have a gray color on here. Let me see what they give me here for gray colors. Um, do they have a nice gray like for pencil? I don't know if they do. I don't really see a gray, but let's try this and see if I can uh, go to, no, it's more of a green. That's kind of a gray. Okay, just want to try to get something different. Yeah, that's sort of a gray. We'll work with that. Pretend that's my pencil. All right. Uh, well, first of all, just like in English, the vowels are vowels. So, uh, the A, A, E, O, and U are your vowels, okay? And uh, just like in English, sometimes Y, so there, that can also be a vowel on occasion. Uh, we'll get to the times when you've noticed vowels with the two dots over that. That's coming up, so wait on that. Okay, but the vowels then, of course, would be A, E, E, O, U. Let's try that. A, E, E, O, U. One more time. A, E, E, O, U. This one's the one a lot of people uh, mistaken because it sounds like R letter E, but that's the letter I, E. Okay? So those are the vowels. Oh, let's see, what's the next one? Here, this one, uh, the G, uh, in German always sounds like a G and never like a J, okay? So I'm gonna make the note always sounds like G. So even the German word for giraffe, which is spelled very similarly, okay, is giraffe, g, giraffe. It's always a g sound, okay? So, giraffe. Got that? Okay. Uh, the next one is, unlike uh, Spanish that has basically all silent H's, uh, the German H is pronounced, okay? And then uh, what I'll say is, uh, let's see if I can get the note up here, pronounced at the beginning. So if a word starts or a syllable starts with an H that is pronounced, uh, just like in English, ha, you know, uh, pronounced at the beginning of a word, so like hot or hoot or something like that, that is uh, pronounced. But an H can also, uh, if it comes after a vowel, it can also, 
also uh, lengthen a vowel. You can also lengthen a vowel. I'll give you a sample down here, but you don't need to write this right now. Actually, let me see if I can find one from our uh, previous stuff that we had. Yes, like fauna, uh, fauna, the flag. Uh, in German, that would be spelled as an F. Uh, F-A-H-N-E. And in this case, uh, the H is only serving to lengthen the A. Uh, again, you don't need to write that down. That's just a uh, sample there. There. Okay. So, uh, there's a H. Uh, the E always sounds like that. Ah, the J here, or the J, sounds like a Y. Okay, so the, the J here sounds like a Y. Alright, make sure you have that one down in your notes. Okay, uh, so even a word, and you don't have to write this one down, like Yake. Yake. Well, I didn't write that very well. Let me see if I can spell that a little better. Yeah. Now you can see the word jacket in there, but it's pronounced yake. Yake. Alright, so uh, anything whoops, with a J will uh, sound like a Y. Okay? Great. The next one is between the uh, C and the K. Uh, the C and the K here. The C is less common and the K is uh, very common. Okay, so uh, if you hear a sound, a word that sounds like a K, K uh, guess K. It's going to be written with a K probably uh, at least nine times out of ten. Uh, if you have a German-English dictionary, look under the section of C's you'll find it's probably just a page of that. Uh, the K section is the longer section, uh, page after page after page of K words. So, some of the words that we've had uh, before that you might uh, think of, just think of Katze, Katze in German, that's a K, okay? So Katze is a K in German. Okay, well, I know it's getting a little complex here, aren't they now? Okay, uh, no... No special things about LMN or P. Uh, just like in English, the Q uh, takes a U. So Q U, just like in English. Uh, so if you have a Q, uh, have a U after that. We talked about the pronunciation of the R. Don't worry. Again, if you can't pronounce it at this point, you're not going to be uh, deducted any points if you can't pronounce that yet. Now the S has a long set of notes, so I'm going to go down here a little bit to get these notes, okay? So, uh, I'm going to have to kneel just a bit. I uh, hope I'm still on camera. I guess I am. So the S notes, uh, the S will sound like an S at the end of a syllable, but will sound like a Z at the beginning of a syllable. So I'll write this down. Sounds like a Z at the beginning of a syllable and then uh, sounds like an S at the end of a syllable. Okay, so a sample on that one, uh, one that sounds like a Z at the beginning of the syllable, think of zinct, zinct, S-I-N-G-T, zinct, not synced, but zinct, okay, and uh, sounding like an S at the end of a syllable, let me see if I can find one that would uh, uh, work for that, like niece. Like a nest. Oops. So, nest 
as the S at the end of that syllable and has uh, the regular S sound. Okay, very good. Okay, hope you keep them up okay. Then uh, the V in German, uh, let's see, sounds like an F. Okay, so uh, for example, four, you know, I'll, I'll hint it, four is actually V O R. So four, it sounds just like an F, but that's V O R. Great. And then the W uh, sounds like a V. So, uh, so in the word, um, Oh, now I just lost my train of thought. Like weint, weint. Okay, it's ba basically like the English word wine, which you're whining, but it pro is pronounced like a V, so weint. All right? So that will sound like a V. What's interesting is, uh, you know, Volkswagen, okay? Uh, in English, we say it's a VW. In German, that would be a Falve, Falve, and that whole thing would be pronounced. Volkswagen, Volkswagen, okay, so an F sound and a V sound, Volkswagen, very good, okay, and let me see, the Upsilon, uh, as we had said, can function as a vowel, and I'll get back to what that would sound like, here's the last note on this part, is uh, the Z, uh, Sounds like a TS, like in, if I say, oh, rats, rats, okay, that's rats, rats, so it has that t sound, so the letter is pronounced a tet, tet, there's just a little T in front of it, and if I can zoom this down just a tad, get that up here, uh, for example, some people have difficulty with the number 10 in German, which is spelled like this, okay? Uh, and that is not tain and it's not zane, it is tain. Hear that? Tain. So there's that T-S there, tain. Tain is the pronunciation, tain, okay? So I hope you kept up with that, okay? Well, it's got to be a little complex looking, didn't it? Okay, so those are some notes. Wow, I sure hope uh, uh, you can read those and that I can read them on your sheet. Okay, now, if you still have some room at the bottom, you can take uh, the following notes at the bottom. But uh, if you need to, there is the back side. And we have one more main page of notes uh, right here. So it is this amount. That will give you an idea of what needs to go. Uh, at the bottom. All right. So to do this, I wonder if I've got my uh, tools here. Let's do this. Very good. And where is it? Okay. Okay. So here's the next part then. Uh, all right. Let's try this here. Oh, you've probably seen a, uh, whoops, let me try that again. Great. You've probably seen a, uh, a symbol that looks like this. It's sort of like an overgrown bee with a tail and so forth. Uh, and you've wondered about that in German. That is called an S set. An S set. It basically functions as uh, two S's. All right? And uh, you'll write this down, by the way, in your notes, okay? So the S set uh, is, uh, functions like two S's. Uh, it is possible to write two S's, but they're not just interchangeable. You can't just decide to write it this way and decide to write it with two S's. Certain words are spelled with two S's, and certain words are spelled with an S set. <clears throat> it always comes at the end of a syllable which also means, therefore, no word can start with an S set. And therefore, you will never confuse it with a capital B because an S set will never start a word and a capital B might start a word, okay? So an S set, 
All right. And uh, sample word on that one we've had is uh, Fuss. Like a Fussboden or your Fuss. Okay. So Fuss spelled like that. Okay, got that one? Great. The next one are uh, the two dots over certain letters. And again, I hope you can see that, okay? There's only three letters in the German alphabet that can take the two dots, which are called umlauts. Only three letters, I'm going to be asking this on a you-know-what, okay? Three letters can take that. There's an A, an O, and a U that can take the two dots over uh, those vowels. Okay? No other vowels can in German, uh, with rare exceptions. Okay? So A uh, with the umlaut, O with the umlaut, and U with the umlaut. Okay? <clears throat> and actually, let me go this way here. Let's look at each of these. The first one is the A with the umlaut. The A with the umlaut sounds just like the German E, which is A, A, uh, and it's spelled uh, a word like Mädchen, Mädchen, I hope you can see that, and I do want you to write that down. Okay, so Mädchen, that's M, A, umlaut, D, C, H, E, N, Mädchen. So a uh, regular A without the umlaut, of course, is A. And with the umlaut, it's A. So it sounds just like the German E. Got that one? Great. The next one down here is the O umlaut. This one is a sound we don't have in English, but it's a sound you can make. It's uh, not that hard. This is what you do. You also do the German A sound. So A, A. But you keep your teeth and your tongue exactly where they are. Don't move your teeth, the spacing, or the tongue where that is. You simply start rounding your lips from there, and you'll get that sound. So from A, you go A, E, E, E. Try that. E, E. Look at somebody and tell them E, E. That is this sound here. Okay, the O umlaut. Like in Österreich, Österreich, that's that sound, Ö, Österreich. And in case you can't see that, Österreich is spelled capital O with the umlaut, S-T-E-R-R-E-I-C-H. Once again, capital O umlaut, S-T-E-R-R-E-I-C-H. And by the way, when I grade your notes, if I have something capitalized here, that's not optional for you. You have to capitalize that. That is part of the spelling. So, like Mädchen is capitalized. That's not a mistake. Okay? And Österreich is capitalized. The last one that can take the umlaut, German I plus rounded lips. So you do the same thing. You start with E, E, keep your teeth and tongue where they are. And then round your lips. E, 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 E. So you look at someone and say, E, E. Right, okay? So, uh, like in München, München, E, E. Okay? Now, just to get the difference between these last two, this one, the O umlaut is E, uh, and the U umlaut is E. So, E. Uh, E, 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 E. And by the way, that does not give you permission to go around the school saying E, E. Okay, there. Then, you're going to find in German that all nouns are capitalized. That's just a rule that I like to get out there early so when you see why is that word capitalized, it's because it's a noun. There's actually very easy capitalization rules. All nouns are capitalized. Uh, the beginning of a sentence is capitalized. And there's one other uh, rule about what we call the formal U, which we'll get to in a couple of weeks. And that's capitalized. So there's only three real rules about capitalization in German. Not bad at all. Okay. How are you doing so far? Pretty good? Great. Then uh, I'm going to... Let's see if I can get this here. 
We'll talk about Grimm's Laws. I can get that. Grimm's Laws. Grimm, like the Grimm brothers, yes, the, the people from the uh, fairy tales, the Grimm brothers, they didn't actually write fairy tales, they were researchers. And they studied languages and how they uh, developed. And as German uh, emigrated over to England, and the Saxons brought over their Saxon language, Saxons are Germans, by the way, they brought over their Saxon language uh, to the Anglos. Then we got Anglo-Saxon. And these uh, researchers found several laws that actually help us quite a bit in, um, in studying German. So these are the final notes to take. <clears throat> We're going to have a series of German letters and what they became in English and some samples. And here's the first one. So a T in German became a D in English. So you'll write the T under the German category and it becomes a D in English. Okay. And here's three samples and yes you'll need to write the samples down and spell them correctly. Uh, like in gut, gut. See the uh, T here became a D. So gut, we got a D now in English. Or alt, you ever guess what alt is? Yes, that's old, old, because the T becomes a D. Or salat should be very easy, it's salat. Obviously, if the T becomes a D, it's salad, okay? Salad. So, that's very helpful. Here's the next one. The D in German becomes a TH in English. And by the way, this is not every time for every word, but usually the oldest of words functions like this. Okay, so the D in German becomes a TH in English, as in Danke, Danke, right? Uh, so Danke, the D becomes a TH for thanks. Bruder, you could probably guess that one, Bruder. As the D becomes a TH, you can see the word brother. How about this one? Erde. Erde. If the D becomes a TH, you can probably figure out the word. It's earth. Did you get it? Earth. So, uh, this is a real handy chart for us to be able to use to figure out words in German. And you're writing these down, and if I capitalize it, you have to capitalize it. The next one is the Z in German becomes a T in English. Uh, like two of our numbers, zwei and zing. So that's why we spell the number two that strange way, T-W-O, because uh, the German is zwei. Uh, so the Z just becomes a T in English. Okay, so uh, zwei or zing, the number ten is spelled with a Z in English or in German, but it became a T in English. How about this word, Hertz? If you know that the Z becomes a T, you might be able to guess that Hertz means heart. Your heart. That's right. Okay. Next one. Oops, I'm not getting it down all the way. The G becomes a Y uh, a lot of times. The German G becomes an English Y. Like our word we just got, Guten Tag. Tag. That actually has two changes. The T becomes a D, and the G becomes a Y. So once you do the T becoming a D and the G becoming a Y, you have the word day. Okay? So that's how that Tag changed to day into English. Or how about this? Fliegt, or I should have written Fliege, Fliege, okay? Which is a fly, all right? Fliegt is just the action of fly. He's going to fly. Okay, but it's the same type of thing, fliegt. And how about auge, auge, see, the G becomes a Y, auge. Now, that doesn't get you perfectly the English word, but it gets you a lot closer and can be very, very helpful. All right, the next one is the German B becomes an English V, okay. So in B, it becomes a V. I'm actually going to start with the last one that's easiest to show is Sieben. Sieben, where we say seven with a V. The Germans have the B that turned into a V for English. Or habe. Ich habe uh, einen Filzstift. I have. 
You can see that. This one's a little harder. Abend. If we know that the B becomes a V, then uh, you could probably guess that uh, Abend is evening. That's a little harder, but it gets you somewhat close to that. Abend is evening. And uh, we had that in our lesson as well. Next one down. The F in German becomes a P in English. So, uh, F in German becoming a P in English, like Hilft, Hilfe, Hilfe. Of course, that's help, so the F becomes a P. Or Schläft, Schläft becomes sleeps, sleeps. Okay, or Reif, you might be able to guess that one. If the F becomes a P, that's ripe, like in the fruit is ripe. Very good. So the F becomes a P. Are you getting these down? Great. Uh, the last one on this list is uh, the S set or a double S. Also becomes a T just like the Z does. Uh, often becomes a T in English. Okay, so the S set or a double S often uh, turns into a T in English such as uh, Fuss, Fuss, obviously foot, Wasser, that's easy, Wasser, uh, where the double S becomes the T, so water, or Besser, right, so Besser on that one. Here's the last thing I'll add to that is, um, you can use these laws to really figure out some good words and sometimes, words that don't even look anything like English, once you put it through these laws, it can help. And I'll give you one or two examples. Uh, one of them might be uh, Swansea. Oh, why is that erasing? That's weird. Let me try this again. Now, I have no idea what's going on. Let me go over here. Okay, good. That's working. Sorry about that. That's odd. Uh, oh, now they're, now they're all there. Well, uh, that's an odd thing, isn't it? Now, I have no idea what's going on right now, but I'm going to try it up here. Very good. Swansea. And you already know that that's 20, but let's just say you didn't know what that was. And you look at this word and you say, that's a difficult word. I don't know what that is. Well, you see that the Z in German becomes a T. So, you go down here and make that a T, okay? Same with this Z, you got another T down here. And you see that the G becomes a Y, all right? So, Y. Now, you have uh, T, W, A, and T, Y, basically. Oh, that's a lot closer, okay? 20. It gets you a lot closer there, okay? Again, it's not perfect but it gets you quite close. And one final example, I went the other way once. I had a German out here and I was trying to, I took the German to old Colorado City and was trying to point out the uh, ceiling which was made out of tin. And I didn't know the word for tin in German. I don't normally use that uh, word, uh, but I did this in reverse. So I thought, well, if a T in English was originally a Z in German, I went backwards that way and tried Z, I, and, and I said, das ist Zinn, Zinn. And it was close enough, the German knew what the word was and told me that word is actually Zinn, Zinn. But it, it was close enough and we got it. So uh, these laws really, really help. Okay. So I hope you've got the, those notes nice and neatly in your um, planner, excuse me, in your heft under the G2 preliminary notes, front and back side. I eventually will be grading that, not right away, but I will be. And I plan to post the basic notes, not the extra things I wrote, but those basic notes that are typed out onto the website. So if you want to double check on the website and make sure you've spelled things right, go to the web locker under Beginning German and you will see those notes there. Uh, hope you have a great weekend and tschüss.